So my name is Caitlin Allen, I'm, and I'm from Emory University. I'm a third year doctoral student um, at the Rollins School of Public Health there. And I'll be talking about the role of family network structures in um, family cancer history collection among African Americans in Georgia. So I want to start with a little poll amongst you all. Um, by show of hands, how many of you know your family's history of cancer? Like three, wow, OK. And keep your hands up. Of those, um, how many of you have record, you can put your hand down, no, keep your hands up if you've recorded this information formally on like a family tree or with a Surgeon General's tool? So like three people? Okay, so um, this is really good data for me, um, but a good in <laughs> introduction into um, my presentation. So um, thinking more broadly, there is a lot of movement um, in the field of precision public health. And so precision public health is this idea of taking information like family cancer history and tailoring various screenings and um, recommendations based on that information. So for example, mammography screenings um, might be, look different for someone who has a really strong history of cancer in their family. You might start earlier than if you don't have a family history of cancer. Um, and so this is a frontline method for assessing cancer risk. However, um, you all are not representative of the general population because many of you know this information, but um, many individuals don't know this information. And then and less than one third of adults have collected family cancer history or family health history in general. And so this is using tools like the Surgeon General's tool. Um, they've come out with a lot of um, promotions at the federal level to try to get people to talk about their family health history at Thanksgiving. Um, and so these are sort of efforts that are underway, but there hasn't been a lot of traction around that. And so there are also differences, racial and ethnic differences, in communication patterns about, the, about family cancer history. Um, and this is based on family structures, family dynamics, even definitions of family, and being in touch with your biological family. And so in particular, there are many um, disparities uh, in, in both cancer burden and also in um, collection of family cancer history among African Americans. And so my sort of high, my overarching aim here is that there is a need for to better understand our family network structures and how that either facilitates or um, is a barrier to knowing your family's cancer history. So here's sort of a conceptual model that I am going to build for you all. But basically, um, as the research to date, most of the research is falling into looking at individual belief factors. So um, do you think you can communicate with your family about this information? Do you think family cancer history is important? Um, and that ultimately would result in family cancer history collection. And you can look at things like how complete it is, how accurate it is. Um, and so there are a variety of sort of indicators there. What I am interested in doing, both as part of this summer project and also as part of my dissertation, is adding on family network factors. And so this is looking at the structures of families. And these are examples of the types of um, structural components you could look at. Um, and then also um, social support information. Um, so things like how many people in your family are considered a blocker or a dis disseminator of cancer information. And I'll talk more about that when I get to my results. However, this summer, um, I also recognize that there was a strong need to think about the cue to action. And so I mentioned that there are a lot of these federal initiatives and things that are trying to get folks to collect their family um, health history or in family cancer history. And um, they haven't had a lot of uptake and traction. So I also took a step back and thought more about what that cue to action, what that tool is that people should be using, and what um, people really think of the tool. And so I'll, I'll describe the tool that I used in my study and what, um, what folks actually thought about it and if it was useful or not. So here's my two original aims. Um, I'm going to focus on aim one, since aim two is a much deeper uh, network analysis, and I'll be continuing to both collect data and analyze data down the line. Um, so I'm focusing on assessing how individuals engage their family network and family 
health family cancer history collection by recording the various steps that they take and then also who in their family um, they're working with and who knows this information. I also went ahead and added um, a sort of aim zero, <laughs> um, which is what are their perceptions about the innovation? And so the innovation here is a family cancer history collection tool called It Runs in My Family. And I use the diffusion of innovations to think about the different characteristics of that tool um, and, and what folks thought of it. So that was not in my original um, proposal. So here's my methods um, for e what each participant sort of went through um, as far as it, participating in my study. So I recruited individuals, and then I set them up with um, It Runs in My Family, which is specifically designed to collect cancer health information. It's an it uses an avatar, it's a bot, and it asks you all of these questions, and it builds a pedigree in a very user-friendly way, or a, I think is a user-friendly way. Um, and then I took, and once people had completed the It Runs in My Family tool, they, um, we had a qualitative interview. And so this is an example, and I'll show you another um, later, about the type of data that I was actually collecting. So we basically looked at the um, pedigree, and we went through and talked about various types of individuals in each, in their family, um, and marked those. And then I'll use that down the line for the network analysis. So the results I'm going to present are quite high level um, and, and very descriptive, but it should give you a flavor of sort of the types of things that I'll be able to answer. So the first is around that uh, aim zero that I mentioned, which is the perceptions of the tool and perceptions of it runs in my family. So these are the various um, innovation characteristics from the diffusion of innovations. And you can see that most considered the tool quite easy to understand and fill out. So the highest they could rate it was a 10. Many felt comfortable using the tool and that it was consistent with the needs of their family members. People were less likely to recommend the tool to their family members or friends. Um, and there wasn't as much interest from other family members. And so often, it's a biased sort of sample here. This is, these are folks that are probably interested in getting that information, so they didn't think other family members would be as likely to use the tool or need it. Folks felt that being part of the study and using the tool resulted in wanting to use, continuing to use it. And then they also felt that um, using the tool resulted in a better experience than other ways that they've collected it. So things like being at a doctor's appointment or even um, some people mentioned Ancestry.com and different um, ways that they've maybe tracked their health information. <clears throat> so you can see here, um, this is descriptive information about who folks were contacting and talking to um, about their family cancer history. And I was quite surprised that um, over half mentioned brothers, um, and si it was most commonly siblings and um, people that were sort of in the same generation as themselves. And to break that down a little bit more, there are four types of individuals in each family that I was asking about. And so an information seeker, I would, I would ask the person, um, let me know who on your family tree would fit this description. And so information seeker are people who are, would be willing to share information about cancer. And you can see here that it was commonly brothers and sisters. So again, people sort of at the same generation as them, themselves. You also can see ants are, were quite common. Tangible ex exchanges would be people who would either go to the doctor with you or um, that you would go to the doctor with them. So people that you're really having some sort of tangible um, interaction with. And again, this was commonly um, brothers, sisters, people at that same um, generation, and then oftentimes daughters. So I did interview a fair number of women um, and their daughters were important for the tangible exchange. Disseminators um, are people who might spread cancer information across the family, so it's cancer or genetic information. And here you can see that there were many brothers that would do this, um, which was uh, somewhat surprising to me. 
Finally, our blockers. And so blockers would be people who might be resistant to either sharing their health information or, to, yeah, to sharing their health information or hearing health information. And so brothers were also resistant. So I haven't quite teased this out yet since May, I, I, I can't sort of, and I would ask you all if you have thoughts about it, but um, tease out sort of this idea that brothers could be both blockers and also um, disseminators of information. So that's to be determined. This is an example um, of the type of data that I was collecting to give you a sense of the next steps that I'll be doing in my analysis. So for every single family, I have a pedigree like this. And then these stars and things, I, I would go through with the participant and have this on the screen and pull down the different types of individuals. And so I now have 20 odd <laughs> family members for this participant. Um, and then I have the different types of um, relationships they have with um, the individual. So I'll be able to continue analyzing for AIM-2, which I'll talk about now. So AIM-2 was really to um, look at the, the influence of both individual beliefs and these family network factors on the family health history collection outcomes. And so I would hypothesize that um, certain types of family network factors might results in uh, or would have a significant proportion of variance in family cancer history beyond that individual level. So to do this, I will be using hierarchical block regression and just starting with the individual level variables and then adding in the network variables. So things like how many blockers are in the family, how many disseminators. And then I'll also continue to um, analyze the data to look at um, more specifically, some uh, outcomes around family cancer history collection. And so what are the various factors at the network and individual level that are going to lead to better uh, family cancer history collection, which is measured through completeness um, and known cancer information. So as far as future projects for other students, I think there is a lot of opportunity, not necessarily to use my data, um, since I will ha ultimately have a relatively small sample size in comparison to many of you with hundreds and hundreds of participants, um, but to continue to look at social network analysis, ego network analysis, and to think about things in this type of way. Um, so I'm using ego network analysis for this, but I think there's opportunity to do a full network approach, which would mean that you're interviewing multiple family members from the same family and getting different perspectives. I also think that there is an opportunity to develop and test interventions um, to improve the family cancer history gathering. So if, we're, if we looked at um, a family network that had a lot of blockers, what kind of intervention might we use to help improve communication about cancer history in comparison to um, a family that might have a lot of disseminators? So interventions would look different. I also think you could compare the individuals with and without a cancer history and see if their networks look different. And then you could use a network approach to answer a ton of different questions. So um, amongst cancer patients, um, what did the dissemination of that information look like? What did caretaking look like across the family? Um, what does follow-up about um, various screenings look like? So there's lots of types of questions that you could use this method of network analysis to answer. So these were the original learning um, objectives that I outlined, which included professional development um, for an iterative research program, um, improving my methodological and analytic skills, and then um, developing more topical expertise. And so ultimately, these are some of the outcomes that I outlined originally, which I, I think I have partially achieved this summer and will continue to work toward um, as I continue to analyze the data. And some of the areas um, sort of in reflecting how things went um, in data collection and this whole project um, is first that there are always, as many of you have mentioned, sort of these startup issues and um, 
in research. And so I did all primary data collection and um, there were startup issues in getting the It Runs in My Family site to work and making sure that people have the right passwords and information, you know, some of that basic stuff that always ends up taking longer than you anticipate. I also shifted some of my, my aims and I added that first aim based on the needs of the participants. And so they really were talking a lot about um, the tool itself and so I added in questions and I added in a qu quantitative component specifically around the tool. Data cleaning as many of you have talked about takes a long time and um, and especially for network data because I have one individual and then all of their family members and all of the information about each family member so it just multiplies it drastically. Um, I also I learned about more about qualitative interviewing, particularly around sensitive topics, because a lot of this information, as you might imagine, brought up stories um, about what they how they found out about cancer for the first time in their family, and um, just a story about a very specific individual, and um, so just learning to make people help people feel feel comfortable with um, sharing those stories and also being responsive and respectful to the. Um, and then I would say resilience and flexibility were important. So long term, um, my next steps are to use this, these data and the um, data that I have collected since I submitted this on August 10th. Um, and I'll be using this toward my dissertation. Um, I'll also, I'm also planning on applying for an F99KOO award this year, which is a nice transition award um, to help finish out my doctoral program and then hopefully move into a postdoc type of position. Um, and then long term, I am hoping to work at a comprehensive cancer center type of setting um, as an assistant professor. So, thank you. <laughs>